Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the Golden Ages from designer Luigi Farini, which is a civilization building game that plays surprisingly quick with a surprisingly small footprint. Now I'm going to be doing a run through today so you can decide whether it might be something you would enjoy. So, here we are, set up, although not really, I, just for fun, I went on ahead and said, here it is, here is the world as we know and love. Take one long last look at it because it's gone. This is not the world we'll be playing in. Take all these tiles, just gonna kinda randomly grab them into a, a grab bag of continents because this jigsaw puzzle is gonna be anything but the world you and I know and love. All right, so grab these four starting tiles. There's another additional continent tile. Uh, let's see. Now, at the beginning of the game, this one gets placed here in the center. I'll go ahead and slap it down randomly like that. Everybody gets one random starting tile. I'll take that one. Jen can take this one, whatever it is. These other two are out of the game. And then there's a whole bunch more. As the game goes on, more of the world will be discovered and we'll add more to the map. But here we go. Now, at the beginning of the game, Everybody is starting out basically in the Stone Age. We're all a bunch of Neolithic hunter-gatherers with some very basic technology. The wheel, the ability to hunt, fire, and barter. Although, as you can see, each one of these four tracks will be able to expand and grow over the course of the game. The wheel can grow into horse-drawn carts, can grow into locomotives, can grow into air flight, can grow into space flight, oh my goodness. And bartering can turn into riding, can turn into commerce, and, and so on. So. Over the course of the game, you will learn more and more two technologies, and the design of the game is such that you, no one civilization will be able to conquer all of these technological advancements. So you really will specialize as the game goes on. Also, everybody starts with three bucks, five city cubes, so each of us can build up to five cities, and then we also have our capital marker and our three worker markers that represent our civilization going out and getting busy doing stuff. Also, at the beginning of the game, everybody gets a starting hand of five cards. One for each of the four ages, the first, second, third, and fourth age, and then also a future card. And these cards, and they're totally random. You can see here's a whole bunch of cards that didn't get handed out in this game. So there's a lot of variability every time you play because you're going to get a different set of starting hand of cards. And these give you kind of a long-term strategy you can build based on how your civilization is going to evolve. Now, as part of setup, I have to reveal that at the beginning of the game, I am the ancient Greeks. And Jen, she over here is, um, I think, is this the Phoenicians? I think it's the Phoenicians. Let's see. Uh, yes, there it is. She is Phoenicia. All right. So, but over the course of the game, I will expand. I may start out as Greece, but in the second age, you know, after we've uh, you know left uh, prehistory and the antiquities, well, I could become France, and then in the third era, the third age, I could become is this Portugal? Yeah, the exploration bonus, and then in the fourth, in kind of the modern era, I could become Russia. Also, I have a secret end goal. At the end of the game, for my civilization to develop space flight and earn me eight victory points, at the end of the game, I have to have more glory tiles, those tiles over there, than anybody else. So this is a goal I've got set for myself that I really want to make sure I hit at the end of the game, that I've got more glory than anyone else. All right. Let's see. And so Jen, of course, she's got her own um, strategy because each one of these additional cards gives her a new special power. And the interesting thing is, at the beginning of every age, and this game takes place over four ages, you will have a choice. Stick with the, with the, uh, the empire you currently are or evolve into the next empire and replace your old special power with a new special power. So like my special power at the beginning of the game is I can build one wonder and only one for free. And then this power is useless anyway, so you better believe in the next age I am going to upgrade to the French. Or not upgrade, but I'm going to evolve or you know migrate or whatever you want to think of it. I'll, we will become the French Empire. And the French have an interesting power. They can start wars, and whenever they do, well, anybody can start a war, but with the French, when they do it, they get four bucks from the bank because they like to fight, apparently. And when I get to the third age, I'll have an interesting choice. Do I want to stay French so that I can keep that power, or do I want to become Portuguese so I can get a different power that rewards me for traveling around, for actually circumnavigating the globe, which is what this icon represents. So I will have some decisions to make as I evolve, but always with that end goal of spaceflight in mind. 
Okay. Oh, that's actually really interesting. The way, it's actually a nice combo. The way you get these glory tokens is to engage and win wars. And because I'm French, where was it? Or because I will be French at one point, ultimately Russian if I want to, but the French are better at wars because they get money for it. So, my, you know, my, I might stay French a lot longer. I might fight a lot to make sure that I have more glory tokens than anybody else at the end of the game. All right. So that's my starting situation. Jen is the Phoenicians. Well, her special power is, and this lightning bolt means it happens immediately. This is a one-time thing. The Phoenicians start out with an additional bit of technology. They start out with the power of writing. So, normally it would cost three gold to learn this, but Jen just got it for free. Okay, and now what that means is, be all, every player at the beginning of the game has fire. That means they've got this space unlocked. They could build one building. But Jen, as Phoenicia, she has two spaces. She's unlocked this space. Jen can have two buildings active at once, which can mean she can have more flexibility and more powers. You can unlock this space as well if you ever get architecture, which is on a totally different technology line. Okay, so the other thing that was revealed with the Jen of Phoenicia on Greece is Jen is, has the number two. I've got the number four. Whoever has the lowest number is the first player. So that is Jen. So Jen is going to start off this first age, and let's get going. Now, the first thing you do at the beginning of an age is more of the world is revealed. So Jen has this tile, which at one point would have been uh, India and Arabia, but now is going to be something completely different. Now, she has to place this down so that it, you know, where it's like this would be legal. But this would not because the water and the land don't mix up. Also, interestingly, there are all these pre-painted islands on the board. You can ignore them or not. It's your choice. I mean, Jen could build like this and completely destroy this island. Um, you know, or she could build like... Oh, no, she wouldn't build like that. That's not legal. But let's see, as an example. Yeah, she could build like that. Ah, well, anyway, the important thing is it is legal to build like... You know, because again, you ignore these islands until you actually move guys onto them. So this would be legal. Even though this land doesn't line up with the sea, it's fine because you can ignore these spaces. You can completely cover them up, etc., etc. Now, how does Jen want to place? How does she want to explore some of the world? Well, the interesting thing is, Jen, as the Phoenicians, I forgot, she has one more power. In addition to having writing at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of the game, or I should say, at the beginning of every age, four wonders come out. And it's always the same four wonders every time you play. While there's a lot of variability, a lot of surprises with a lot of the setup, the buildings that come out, the, the civilizations you get, the four wonders are always going to come out. And Jen, as the Phoenicians, she gets a discount. For any other player, the Colossus of Rhodes would cost three bucks, but for Jen, it only costs two. So that means, I think in this first age, she wants to get this wonder built and take advantage of her discount. But the power of this wonder is, as soon as you build it, and again, there's the lightning bolt, as soon as you get it, you immediately score two victory points for every city. A cube is a city that you have on the board. So that means before Jen builds this, she wants to get a bunch of cities built. So, with that in mind, I think, let's see, how would she be able to place this? Like, actually, hmm, no. All right, so something like that? No. Something like this? Yeah, that works. Okay, so this is how Jen's going to place her starting tile. And like I said, again, you know, this is legal. It doesn't matter that this is kind of a weird mismatch because when you're placing your tiles, you can ignore these little islands. Okay. They're still there. They're still legal. You can still travel there and get these resources. But um, Jen is going to set this up. Now, after you put your tile down at the beginning of a, of a age, you have the opportunity to place your civilization's capital. It has to go on one of these spaces. And you know, in a future turn, when you get another tile, and you might place this tile way on the other side of the known world, you could move your capital to the new place because you can, you know, pick up sticks and completely migrate to a whole new world. And that's how you can become a completely different... That's how the Greeks can turn into the French because they travel from one side of the world to the other. But that's later on in the game. Right now, Jen has to choose. Is her capital going to be here, here, or here? I think it's going to be right there. And now by doing this, Jen's capital is completely consuming all of this stone. That is a resource that is not available to anybody because the capital has devoured it. The reason Jen chose this starting position is two. One, it gets her right next to this island, which is really nice because it has double yield. It's one of the few places in the world that you can actually, for one guy on this island, you can get two different resources. But also, by putting here, Jen is equidistant to three... Actually, which, which is something like this. 
No, either way, it's still going to be three. Jen is equidistant to three different places that she could build a city. Because remember, she's going to want to build cities really quickly so that she can benefit from the Colossus of Rhodes. So there we go. So Jen has started to discover and expand the world. And now, I have to do the same. I've got my tile, which here's England and what would have been, you know, Spain and all of that. Now, where can I put this? I can build this off. I mean, heck, I could. Could I do something like that? No, I couldn't. Actually, I can't go into this because that's not legal, but I mean, I could, oh, I could, yeah, I could go like this. I could build right next door to Jen if I wanted to and create this crazy mishmash of India and Europe and Italy there. And then I would be picking my own spot on one of these three tiles on my start tile. And in so doing, I have also ended up obliterating this island. No one will ever speak of it again. So I can do that if I want. And the main reason I would do this is because if I want to go after Jen, if I really want to start trying to attack her, because I, that means I would want to have my capital close to her so that if she expands out, I could expand out and destroy her cities. But I don't think I really want to attack her until the second age because that's when my warlike ways are going to start paying off when I become France. So I think for now, I'll just keep my distance. Let's say if I came over something like this, that's really interesting, that's legal. And boom, I'm right next to this double yield space. But I can still, yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. That's cool. Okay, so there we go. Now I've got to pick a starting capital. I'll be right here, I'm obliterating all the food that could have been found in the British Isles. Uh, what well, would have been the British Isles. But I'm just a hop skipping away from this hunting ground and, um, you know, farmland. And there's more farmland over here and south of me there's diamonds! And over here, so. There we go. That happens at the beginning of each of the four ages. At the beginning of the second, third, and fourth age, we will randomly grab one of these little tubies. We will put it someplace else as long as it's legal. And then we can pick up sticks or we can leave our capitals where they are. But the age, the first age, has now begun. And Jen is still the first player. So what is she going to do? Well, everybody has a nice little reminder right here on their player board, you can see I've got one too, that reminds you what you can do. Now, we are going to take turns until this era ends, until all the players have decided to declare a golden age. Because this game is going to have four golden ages. A golden age is when an era ends. But before, and, you know, and so that's one of the four, one of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things I can do is declare a golden age. That's the equivalent of me passing and saying, I am done with this era, I'm not going to do any anything else. But I cannot do that immediately. Before I declare a golden era, oh, whoops, I forgot. When I put my capital down, I also put my population in the same space as that capital, as did Jen. All right. Now, the thing is, I cannot declare a golden age. I cannot declare the end of an era until I have put all three, as has Jen, and you know, neither of us can do this, until we have put our three worker markers to work doing things. And now you can see there are four things that the workers can do. They can travel and set up cities. They can build great buildings. They can, they can attack each other and we can try to destroy each other's cities. Or what is this one called? I think this is called Develop Arts or something like that. Great works of art. The great art works of old. Oh, what's it called? Um, yeah, artists. I could just take one of my guys and basically do nothing with him. And that means they spend their entire era basically developing great works of art and score me three points. So these are the four things I can do with my guys, but I also have four actions I can do without my guys. I can develop a wonder. I can develop a technology. Both of those cost me money. I can activate a wonder or a building that I have previously built or I can declare a golden era, or a golden age. Right, so those are the eight things we're gonna do. Jen is the first player, because she drew the short number, and so the first thing Jen is gonna do is, she is going to expand and explore and build a city. So, she will take one of these guys, and she will move west. And now it's interesting, you can see, even though there's a body of water here, these guys, they can, you know, they can travel anywhere. I mean, Jen could start having this guy just travel out the ocean blue and hope to find something in a future age. But Jen is just going to travel across this strait, get over here, and discover this wonderful hunting ground um, of what would have been, what is that? I think if I rotate that around, that was kind of the uh, central west coast of Africa, or east coast of Africa, I think. So here is where Jen's first action is, you can move and or you know, establish a city. 
And Jen is going to do both of those things. She is, she is moved. And now, after moving, this guy gets laid down to indicate that he can't act anymore. Jen's still got two more guys who can do something, and she's going to create a city here. So Jen has created her first of potentially six cities. Okay, now then. Um, right. Now the interesting thing is, whether Jen had built the city or not, as soon as she moved a guy over here into this hunting ground, she took control of the hunting ground. That's what it's called. And um, because Jen has the technology of hunting, you'll notice here's this little hunting ground thing. The red circle means whenever you take control of a hunting ground, you make one buck. So Jen moved over here, she took control of the hunting ground, and that means she made a buck. And now, it's totally optional, Jen doesn't have to, but she is going to build a city here as well. Now that city doesn't uh, mean she has any extra control, but in a future age, this guy could get, pick up and leave, and this city would stay here, and it would indicate that Jen still has control over this hunting ground, even though her, um, you know, her peoples have moved on to new eras and maybe, you know, grabbed some farmland over here, or some, what do you call it, some mines, some stone quarries over there. So anyway. So that was Jen's first move. All right. Mm. Da, 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 da. Is there anything else about that? No, no, that's the whole thing. One thing to bear in mind, though, if Jen, say, had moved onto one of these islands that's pre-printed on the board, moving here would be awesome. It would give her control over a hunting ground where she would immediately make a buck and a quarry, but you can never build buildings on these pre-printed, or you can never build cities on these little islands. You can only build them on the main continent. So anyway, that was Jen's first move. And remember, she's going for trying to get all three of these guys deployed so she can have three cities, then get the Colossus of Rhodes. And since she'll have three cities at that point, she'll make six points. So that was Jen's first move. Now, what is my first move? Hmm. Okay. Now, I can do the same thing. I could start spreading out. I mean, I could spread out right over here to this island. And that'd be great because I'm getting two resources for one area. That's actually pretty cool. But, you know, I think the first thing I'm going to do is... I am going to develop a wonder. Now, this is one of the actions that does not require a dude. And building a wonder costs three, four, three, or three bucks. But I'm going to use my one-time special power, and I'll just tap this to indicate I can't do it again, and build a wonder for free. This one, which would have cost me four bucks, this great library of, I assume, Alexandria, although it's not Alexandria anymore, it's just the great library of my ancient civilization, would have cost me four bucks, which I couldn't even afford, but instead I got it for free. All right, and now what happens is immediately upon building this, I get to build a technology for free. So, um, and I could take any of these level one technologies. I could fix it so that I could travel farther and faster with horse-drawn carriages. I could fix it so that I could start re um, leveraging um, what do you call it? Uh, farmland in addition to hunting grounds. I can fix it so I can start leveraging quarries, or I can fix it so, like Jen, I can have a second building built. I think I will, now I get to do this for free, um, one technology, I'll go ahead and do this one, which would have cost me three bucks. Now this means I take this cube, I now have a sixth city I can build, and I have taken this technology. Okay. Now this first technology of any of the of the four tracks is worth nothing. But the second one of all of them is worth one point. The third is worth two points. The last one is worth four points. So it really does behoove you, instead of just going all out and um, you know trying to get a little bit of everything, really kind of focusing. Now that I've chosen this, I probably want to move on to architecture and then medicine and then ge genetics. Uh, so that I can get all the way before the game is over, because the game is not very long, so I can get to that four-pointer before the game is over. Although, and as I, do, as I do this, I'll be getting different powers as well. Okay, so that was my first move. I used my special guy. Um, and it's interesting. I got a, uh, a wonder that would have cost me four bucks that let me get a technology that would have cost me three bucks. So, effectively, I just made seven bucks for all intents and purposes, off of this thing. Okay, so that was my first move. Now it is Jen's second move. She's just gonna continue with her plans. She is, although, let's see. Now the interesting thing is, so she was just saying, well, you know what, I'll come out over here, I'll grab this farmland, and she'll build a city there as well. But here's the thing, grabbing this farmland won't do her any good. Grabbing the hunting grounds, that got her. If she wanted to, her second action could be, she could, um, <clears throat> Oh, excuse me. She could um, spend her money, she's got four bucks, to learn agriculture like I did. Then when she moves over here, she'll make some money off of that farmland. So about that, let's have her, Jen is also going to learn a technology. She'll learn the same one I did. She's gonna spend three of her four bucks 
and learn agriculture. Okay. And now this one again is worth no points, but she now has an ability as well. So that when she expands over here, she'll make some more money off of it. Okay, so that was Jen's second turn. She did a technology. Now it's my second turn. What am I going to do? <laughs> All right. Well, I think I am now going to start expanding myself and I will expand over here. And the nice thing is I just found hunting ground and farmland. That means I make two bucks because I benefit from my agriculture and my hunting skills. So that's pretty nice. I'm up to five bucks now. Woohoo! Okay. So it's Jen's turn now. She is going to expand over here to the west and she makes one dollar because of her agriculture. So she's starting to rebuild her supplies. And now it is my turn again. Hmm. And let's see here. Now here's the interesting thing. This this age will be over once both Jen and I have deployed all of our dudes. And once we've done that, we can declare the end of an age. Once both of us declare an end of an age, the age will be over. But here's an interesting thing. The first player, we're in a race. The first player to declare the end of an age gets to pick one of these five, and these came out randomly, one of these five judgments of history. And that means we will be judged by history on one of these five criteria. Um, having glory points, having wonders, having diamonds, having buildings, or having excess money. So if I can set myself up to say have six bucks, and then I say at the end, if I if I in the era before Jen does, I could trigger this. You know, the future will judge us based on how wealthy we were. And if I have six bucks, I could make two points. And right now I've got a lot more money than Jen, so maybe it's worthwhile for me to push as fast as I can to um, you know, use all my guys up and then declare an end of an age so that I can pick a future judgment that benefits me more than Jen. All right. And the interesting thing is there's a diamond here. If I move one of my guys down here, I could get a diamond and having that diamond mine would score me two points if I'm the one who gets to choose what, how history judges us, if I'm the one to pass first. But I can see Jen's already ahead of me. Jen only has one more guy to go. I've got two more guys to go. Although if I'm going to use a guy now, I'll be down to one as well. So let's see, what do I want to do? Now, I could, if I'm going to use another guy, because I'm trying to go through my guys as fast as possible, I could expand and set up a city. I didn't set up a city, but I could set up a city. Um, you know, I, I can't set it up over here in this island, but I could set it up over here um, in Spain, <laughs> effectively. Um, and I'd make some more money because of my agriculture by expanding in that area. Now, alternatively, I could just take one of my guys and put them into what's called the Agora. That means they've done work, but it's not out here in the world. And if I do this, that means I could build one of these buildings. Now these buildings become a permanent fixture in my civilization for the rest of the game. This one means I can get technologies for a $2 discount every time I use it. And I can only use it once per age. This one means I can get a dollar for every guy I've got standing out on the map. Now, as it is right now, this is not a particularly exciting building because uh, guys I have on the map are sitting down. Although, if I did build this right now um, and activated it, I'd get a buck because I still have one guy standing on the map because I had to put this guy over here to use it. So, I could build a building. And remember, I've got space for three buildings, although right now only this one is available to me. And if I'm going to trigger the end of the game, I could get three points for having that building. So, maybe I want to build a building. Maybe I just want to, um, instead of putting a guy down here in the Agora to build a building, I could just put him down here to make three points. Or I could go to war. Now, Jen is way too far away from me. I would have to get my guys over closer to her to go to war so that I could get some glory tokens. So, that's kind of off the board. So, I really think the question is, do I just want to expand here, get some more income, or do I want to be the first to build a city? Now, the interesting thing is, Jen, or sorry, not a city, a, a building, a granary or a, a, what is this building? They're all here. That is a, mm, a granary or a library, right? You can develop technology with a discount of two. So that would be really nice because technologies, and you know, I'll have this for the rest of the game, potentially, if I don't destroy it. You know, technologies get really expensive at the end of the game. I think I will. I think I'm going to take my second action. I'm going to send a guy to the Agora to build a building. All right, and I will build this thing and I'll put it in my only building slot. And so that means I can get technologies at a $2 discount, which means I can get these technologies for only one or these technologies for only three, which I could afford. So that was pretty cool. Jen's next turn. All right, she's gonna take her other guy. He's gonna expand over here and Jen is gonna make 
a th um, oops, I forgot. Jen made a city over here on her second turn, and she's going to make a city over here on her third turn. So Jen has really expanded. Jen's got three cities. Now, she just claimed a, um, a what do you call it, a quarry, a stone quarry, but that's not going to help her out much because, let's see, where is it? If she had this technology, which would cost her three bucks, which she doesn't have, she would make money because, you know, she would have, you know, the basics of or oh, whatever that anvil represents, to um, convert the stone quarry into money. But she doesn't. So all she did is she moved over here, she built a city, but she got no immediate benefit from it. Now it's my turn. Okay. And um, let's see, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Okay, I've still got one guy. And plus, in addition to this guy, I've got all these actions. I could keep building wonders if I can afford them. I can um, keep... I can activate, so I can activate this city now to get another technology, or I can get a technology without activating my special building. Hmm, let's see. But I think I will go on ahead and I will expand over here. And I will build a city, because I can. And because I took control of this farmland, I made another dollar. All right, so that was my move. Now it's Jen's turn again. She could declare a golden age right now because all of her guys have now been deployed. But she doesn't want to get out of here until she builds this. And fortunately, because she's Phoenicia, this Colossus of Rhodes does not, or come here, you, does not cost her three bucks, which is good because she doesn't have three bucks. It only costs her two. So she has built the, um, a great wonder, much like I have. Now, this wonder, like I said before, it, first of all, it costs her two bucks because she is Phoenicia. It immediately gives her two points for every city she's got. She's got six cities, so, or three cities, so she just made six points, just like that. All right, and now it's my turn again. And now, this is an interesting thing. Jen has given me the opportunity. I could be the one who declares. Because all my guys are down, Jen had the opportunity to declare a golden age first, but she didn't. She kept going. So now, do I want to declare a golden age? And um, Because then, yeah, you know what I think I'm going to do it. Even though I could keep going, even though, oh, but that's the problem. See, if I declare a golden age right now, I could declare that we get a point based on our buildings. Jen hasn't built any, so that means I would get three points and she would get nothing. But that means the age is over and I've lost my chance to actually use this thing. And I only get four chances to use this over the course of the game. So do I just want to throw my chance away to use it? Because if I don't, if I say use this right now so that I can get another technology at a discount, then I'm probably giving Jen the opportunity to declare a golden age and she'll go on ahead and pick something that benefits her. Although, interestingly, now that's interesting. Jen has no diamonds. She has no buildings. She has a wonder, but I do too. She has no glory and she has no money. So, oh, but that's really cool. Jen could end it first, choose this thing, and because that really, you know, that it doesn't benefit her, but I won't, oh, yeah, I know, and she wouldn't choose this because I would get the benefit, so she would specifically not choose this. She would probably end up choosing this because then nobody gets any bonuses because nobody has any glory right now. Whereas I would get glory off of this and she wouldn't. I would benefit from this and she wouldn't, and we would both benefit equally from that. And neither of us would benefit from the diamonds either. Although that's not true. The interesting thing is, if Jen chose this one, but, um, wait, no, actually, I was going to say I could try to get to diamonds, but I can't because all my guys have already expanded. So anyway, am I going to continue to go so I can activate my building, which gives Jen, I, I'm going to, I don't, I only get four chances to use this thing. I'm going to use it. And the rules say you actually flip them over, but I just go on ahead and tap them. And now that means I am activating my building, which means I now get to um, advance a technology at a $2 discount. Let's see, which one do I want? Um, hmm. Let's see here. I think when I could get architecture, which would unlock another building slot for me, so I could have two buildings like Jen can have two buildings, it would also give me two more cubes so I can have more cities on the board. Now remember, moving into the second era, I'm already remembering that I am France. I'm going to want to go to war with Jen so that I can benefit from it. Maybe that means it, um, I want to get some horse-drawn carriages so it'll be easier for me to run all over the board and attack Jen, um, thereby replacing my wheel with that. And plus it would get me to being able to move around really quick with locomotives. Or do I just want to get the anvil so that I, when I expand, see, because I could attack Jen over here, expand into her, and when I claim this thing, you know, I think I'm going to do that. I am going to... Um, get a two dollar discount. So this technology only costs me one dollar instead of three. And now when I take control over or generating spaces, I get some income. So that was my turn. And now Jen, as predicted, she is going to declare a golden age. 
She is doing this action. She could keep going. She could build another wonder potentially. No, she can't because she's broke. Um, and she doesn't have any buildings to activate now and she can't, um, right. And she doesn't have any guys to build. So she's pretty much done. Jen is going to declare. And the way you declare golden age is you pick your capital up and you flip it. Boom. Now you'll notice there's a little $2 thing here. I can keep going, but for every additional turn I take, Jen gets a $2 income. So Jen, and, oh, and now Jen is going to pick which of these. She'll go on ahead and pick this thing because she, like I said, neither of us benefit from it. And she knows I would benefit from this and this and, um, right. So she's going to pick that because nobody benefits from it greatly. Okay. So now it's my turn again. I've got a choice. I could also bow out or I can keep going. But the longer I keep going, the more income Jen will make. But you know what? These wonders are going to disappear. I might as well go on ahead and do it. I'm going to build myself another wonder. So. Um, I've got three bucks. Do I want to build this thing that whenever, for every ore I have, well, now see, these are both instants. Yeah, I'm going to build this one. This cost me three bucks, the Hanging Gardens. And instantly, I get two victory points for every farmland I have. I've got two farmlands, so I just made one, two, three, four points for building this thing. And now in the future, I could activate this and get another victory point. Okay, so I did that. Now it's Jen's turn. She's passed. Jen makes two bucks, two gold. And now it's my turn again. If I don't pass, I'm just going to keep on allowing her to make more money. If I don't declare a golden age. Um, and actually, I only have two bucks. I can't build this last wonder. I literally cannot afford it. I can't use this anymore. I could use this just to get a victory point. But if I do that, I'd be giving Jen two more, two more bucks. I don't think me getting one victory point is worth giving her two bucks. But the nice thing is, I've got this. Sooner or later, history is going to judge us based on our wonders. So this is worth four points to me at some point in the game. So I'm not going to keep going anymore. I'm not going to let Jen get any more cash. I'm going to declare a golden age as well. And so boom, the first age is over. And so we now evaluate this. Who, um, everybody who has glory tokens gets two points. Nobody has any glory because there's no fighting. So nobody gets any extra points. This is out of the game. Um, and obviously these other ones are going to be um, at, the, at the end of the second, third, and fourth age. So that was that. And the first age has finished. Now we're going to move on to the second age where I will become France, Jen will become something, because there's no reason for Jen to hold on to Phoenicians. She's already gotten the ability of them, so she's going to have a new power. We are going to put more tiles on the board. Our capitals will potentially move around. All kinds of stuff would happen. And if you'd like to see some more, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes um, or go to Final Thoughts. I'll, alternatively, in five, four, three, two, one.